Okay, for this project, I am using, it is called James C. Brett. It's a kind of a chunky yarn. It's not real chunky. Um, show you the difference here. Like, here's this one. And here's a four ply. They're pretty close. And like this would be considered bulky, so it's a lot smaller than that. So if you can find like a chunky yarn in the store, if not, I imagine four ply would probably work. Probably. Or you could even probably do put two strands of four ply together. As long as you can get it pulled through the puff stitches, that would probably work well too. That is if you can't find like this, like a chunky yarn like this. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, I did it in um, this color, but I'm going to start it out in a lighter color so you can see it better. You just want to start with the slip knot on your hook. And then you want to do a chain of five. Okay, and then you want to slip stitch back into the first stitch to form a ring. Like that. Now we're going to be working puff stitches through this ring. So we'll just start by chaining one. Okay, here's our first puff stitch. You're going to yarn over, go through the center of the ring, and draw up a loop, yarn over again, go through the center, draw up a loop, again, you want to do this four times, it's three times, and there's four, and when you get done uh, yarning over and going through the ring four times, you'll have nine loops on your hook, you want to yarn over and go through all nine, like that. And then chain one to hold it in place. Okay, then you want to do it again. Yarn over. Drop the loop, that's one. Two. Three. Four times. Nine loops. Yarn over and go through all nine loops and chain one. Again. <clears throat> Just like that. So now I have three puff stitches on my hook and there's a chain one in between each one. I'm going to do a total of eight puff stitches this round. You can keep sliding them over too to make room. Okay, I got one more. Okay, 
And you want, once you get your eight, you want to make sure you chain one. And then what you want to do is slip stitch into the top of the very first puff stitch, which is right here. So I just slip stitch right there in the top of it. Just like that. Now if you pull your tail, it will usually close up that center circle a little bit more than what it was. Now we're going to start in the next chain one space, so I'm just going to slip stitch right over into it. Like that. Okay, now that we're in the chain one space, that's where we're going to be working now in the chain one spaces this time around. Start with the chain one. Now I'm going to put two puff stitches in each of the chain one spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and do my first one. Chain one. Now I'm going to go back into that same space and do another. Chain one, like that. So I got two in that space. I'm gonna jump over here to the next one and do two more. Chain one, jump over to the next and do two more. So this time around is going to be two puff stitches in every one of these chain one spaces. Okay, I made it back around and now I have a total of 16 puff stitches and I just did my last one and I chained one. So now I want to slip stitch into the top of my first puff stitch. Just like that. And again, I'm going to jump over here to the next chain one space and slip stitch like that. And I'm going to start by chaining one. Now I'm going to go ahead and go through this chain one space and do a puff stitch. And chain one, so that was one puff stitch. Now I'm going to jump to the next space and I'm going to put two puff stitches both in the same spot. Okay, the next space this is going to get one puff stitch. And then the next space is going to get two puff stitches. like that and then the next space we'll get one and the next space we'll get two so that's the repeat all the way around back to the beginning okay I made it back to the beginning and my last stitch was an increased stitch right here I had two double or two puff stitch in the same stitch now I did my chain one 
Then I'm going to jump over and slip stitch into my first top of my first puff stitch. Now this is all the increases I'm going to do since I'm using this chunky yarn. And if you're like if you're using two strands of four ply at the same time, like I mentioned, you could. That's probably all, this is probably all the increases that you want to do too. So after this, now it's just slip stitching over to the next space and just doing chain and one to start. Just doing one puff stitch in every stitch all the way around, and every round will be the same from now on. And that'll bring the hat down. Start bringing it down to fit your head. And then you just jump over and do another one. So that's how that's how it is from now on. Just one puff stitch in every stitch all the way around. And you want to do a total of eight rounds of one puff stitch in every stitch. Now if you're just using like one strand of four ply, you might have to do another row of increases to make it large enough since it's thinner, a thinner yarn. And if I was just using one strand, what I would do on this next round, instead of doing just one puff stitch and every stitch from now on, I would just do one more row of increases. And how I would do that is I would chain one and I would put one puff stitch in the first stitch and then I would jump over and I would put one puff stitch into the next stitch and then in the next stitch I would put <clears throat> two puff stitches so it would be kind of just like you're increasing a regular circle so I put two in the next. Now this is if you were just using like one strand of four ply because you couldn't find the chunky. Because I think if you just use one, it, it's not going to be big enough. So you're going to need this second round or this other round of increases. I don't know, hats are kind of weird getting them to fit like that. And then I would do one puff stitch, one puff stitch, two puff stitches one puff stitch, one puff stitch, two, all the way around. And then I would start doing my rows of one puff stitch in every stitch to make the hat go down. So that's that's what I would do. But if you have this chunky yarn, you just follow what I did in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up my rows. Okay, once you get the eight rows of the puff stitches of the one puff stitch in every um, every space around, That'll give you a total of 11 rows from top to bottom. Of course, you can always make it longer if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do, I went ahead and slip stitched into here. Now I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to go around and putting one single crochet in every stitch. So I'm going to go back into the same stitch right here that I just slip stitched into, the top of this puff stitch. Single crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet right through this chain one space. And then right here into the top of this puff stitch. And then right here in the space. And I'm just going to do this all the way around. And then in the space. And in the top. So I'm going to go around putting one single crochet in every stitch and I'll meet right back up with you here in just one second. Okay when you make it back around after that first row of single crochet now I'm just going to keep going around doing rows of single crochet until I make a little bit of a thicker um, brim part on the hat I guess. Um, I'm not going to slip stitch I'm just going to just if you want to put a stitch marker here to remember your spot you can. Just stick one right here. Otherwise, I'm just going to then you just jump over here to the first single crochet that you did. And single crochet in it. And then you work your way across again. Work your way around. Putting one single crochet 
in every stitch. Now I'm just going to do a few rounds of, of one single crochet in every stitch. I'm just going to keep going around and around and around. And I'll let you know here in just a second how many total rows I do. Okay, I made it back to where I started, to where my stitch marker would be. And I did a total of three rows of single crochets. So I want to keep my stitch marker in that spot. Now what I want to do is count over. We're going to work on the bill. I want to count over 20 stitches. And I already did that. And then you want to put a stitch marker in the 20th stitch. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to do the bill. But I'm going to do um, some increases on just on the first row. To kind of make the bill stick out a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to put one single crochet in the first three stitches. So there's one. Two, three, and then the next one I'm going to put two single crochets in the same stitch. That's an increase. One, two. Now I'm going to put one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, three, and the next stitch will be an increase. It'll get two single crochets in the same stitch. Again, I'm going to put one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, three. The next one is going to get two single crochets. Okay, one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. My next stitch will get two single crochets. Okay, I'm coming to the end here. Here's my stitch marker. One single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then the last stitch where your stitch marker is, put two single crochets in the same stitch. Like that. Okay. So without chaining or anything, I'm not going to chain one or anything, I'm just going to go ahead and turn my work. And I'm going to decrease over the first two stitches. So I'm going to go into the first stitch and draw up a loop. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Three loops on my hook, I'm going to yarn over it and go through all three. Now I'm going to work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch of the bill here until I get to the other end where my stitch marker is. And we'll decrease on that end too. Okay, when I get to my last two stitches, not the one that the stitch marker's in, but the two right before it, go ahead and decrease over them, go in, drop a loop, and then go into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops. And you can take the stitch marker out because you don't need it anymore. Now, without chaining, I'm going to turn my work. Okay, again. I'm going to decrease over the first two stitches. So I'm going to go in first one and drop a loop into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three loops. Okay, I'm going to work my way across putting one single crochet in every stitch of the bill until I get to the other end, until I get to the last two stitches of the, of the other end of the bill. 
and then I'll decrease over them. So now I'm just going to kind of be repeating this row until I get the bill a little bigger, as big as I want it to be. Coming to the end, and I'm at my last two stitches, so I want to go ahead and go in, drop a loop, go into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops. Again, I'm going to turn without chain, without chaining. Decrease again over the first two stitches. Okay. Work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the other side. And when I get to the other side, I will do a decrease again over the last two stitches. Okay, I made it to the other end. Now I'm going to go ahead and decrease over my last two stitches. Just like that. Without chaining, I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Go in and decrease over the first two stitches. And now I'll work my way across till I get to the other end of the bill. Putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the last two stitches. And then I'll decrease over them. Okay, I went ahead and decreased down here at this end. Now, if you want your bill larger, you can just keep doing that. I'm actually, that's all the rows I'm going to do for mine. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down this side of the bill and then all the way around the hat and then back up this side of the bill. Okay, I went ahead and did my decrease down here. Now, if you want your bill to be bigger, you can make it bigger, but that's all the rows I'm going to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Continue by going down this side of the bill and then around the whole hat, back up this side of the bill, and then back around the front of the bill till I get back to here with a row of single crochet. And this is going to kind of clean up all these uh, edges here, like this. Make it look just a little bit neater, kind of. See, that looks a lot neater, like that. And then I'm going to continue around the whole hat, doing one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the other side to where the bill starts again. Okay, I'm still working, putting one single crochet in every stitch around the hat. Now I've come up to the other side of the bill, and now I'm just going to do the same thing by just going up the side of it, putting one single crochet in every stitch. And some of these stitches are kind of hard to see, so I kind of just do my best to space them out kind of evenly if you can. And then I just continue across the top, the front of the bill, putting one single crochet in every stitch. Until I get over here to where I started.
Okay, and then when I get to where I started, I'm just going to slip stitch into that stitch. And then I'll tie this off. And then you can hide all these tails and stuff on here. Okay, that's what I got so far. And I kind of just uh, shaped the bill a little bit. Stretch it a little bit right here so it sticks out properly. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side. I'm actually going to make a strap to go across here with the button on each side. But... And you don't have to do that. You can leave it the way it is. But if you want to do that, go ahead and start with a chain of 35. And I'm going to single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then I'm going to put one single crochet in the first, second stitch from the hook. And then one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Like this. And you want to do that until you get to the end of your chain. Okay, I made it to the end. Now I'm just going to chain one and turn. Now I'm going to go across again with another row of single crochet, but I'm actually going to leave a buttonhole at each end now. So I'm going to go into this very, very first stitch and single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. So that was two single crochets in a row. Now I'm going to chain two, and that's going to be my buttonhole. I'm going to skip two stitches, skip, skip, and then single crochet into the next, like that. And then I'm just going to work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch. And I'm going to do that until I get to the last four stitches of my row. Okay, I made it to the other end, and I have four stitches left. So I'm going to chain two. Skip two stitches and then single crochet into the last two. Like that. And now I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to work my way across one more time. This time I'm going to start my very, very first stitch, single crochet. And I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch. When I get to this buttonhole, I'm just going to go right through the hole and put two single crochets in it. Like that. And now I'm just going to work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the other end. And when I get to that buttonhole, I'll just do it the same way. And then I'm just going to finish out my row. And then I'll just tie it off. And this piece will be done. And we'll go ahead and attach it. Okay, to attach it, you just kind of lay it across the front up here of your bill where you want to put it. And kind of get it where it's even on both sides. You can use your buttonholes as guides. And then what you want to do is find the buttonhole. And sew your button where it's going to attach there. So right there. And then you want to sew the other one too. I'm just going to use um, yarn and a yarn needle to do the button. Um, you can use thread if you want. It doesn't really matter. But just... Put it on here and sew it on just like you normally would a button. And this is how it's going to attach on. I'm going to get it sewed on nice and tight. And what's going to happen is you can see when you put this on. You'll be able to attach it like this button will. And across, and then you'll put your other button on. And then what we'll probably do is put a few stitches to kind of hold it in place. But go ahead and get your button sewed here, and then your button sewed on the other side. Okay, and then once you get your button sewed on, I'm just going to take a piece of yarn and kind of just pin this edge down here a little bit if you want if you want it to hang a little bit you can do that too but I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in it to kind of hold it in place now if you want to go down the whole side front of it and do this too you can like if you wanted to go across the front too and I might do that too just to kind of hold it in place Okay, that's it. I went ahead and just put a couple, like, 
total of like four stitches it's a tack you can see it right there just to tack down the top there I didn't even put any on the bottom that way it just don't come come loose and that's it that's all there is to it it's pretty easy I hope you enjoyed my tutorial I hope you were able to understand it okay uh, and I hope my kids weren't too loud I know they're pretty loud but I'm sorry um, please don't forget to check out my Facebook page if you make this or if you make anything you can post a picture of it on my Facebook page I'll put a link to that below in the description box and don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. And until next time, have a good day.